and you know me from my show Wings. But I've come here to the University of Southern California to take on my first cheerleading assignment ever as I conduct you through a celebration of cheerleaders. Now, for most of us, the word cheerleader conjures up an image of a gorgeous girl with pom-poms and a ponytail cheering her team on to victory. Well, in the next 60 minutes, we are going to shatter some of those stereotypes as we uncover and you discover the new breed of cheerleader. Sometimes I hear a cheer at half and I turn around and they catch my attention. Cheerleading these days is usually thought of as a woman's domain, but in fact men were the first to spread good cheer. In the late 1800s, a group of male students at a Princeton University football game gathered to lead a yell in front of the student body. And from those humble beginnings has grown a form of show business unlike any other. <laughs> Two very unique teams are responsible for the look of modern cheerleading, leading the way, creating a pure pom-pom phenomenon, the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. Their Broadway style of dance kicked off the evolution of dancing cheerleaders. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders were originally put here to glamorize the sidelines. They're entertainers, and they're a very important part of the NFL's football package when you come to a football game. It's show business, and they are a main part of the show. Uh, they don't uh, make tackles, and obviously they don't make blocks. They don't uh, fumble the football. They're not a part of why you win and lose, but they are part of show business. While the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders sizzled on the sidelines, the Los Angeles Laker girls catapulted to courtside fame with the help of Paula Abdul. When I became a choreographer, I just said goodbye to the pom-poms. We're going to be a dance team. As a Laker girl, Paula choreographed killer moves that influenced dance teams throughout the NBA. We worked like three hours, three times a week. And there were maybe two girls that had for any formal ballet training. So it was really the challenge of making these girls look like solid trained dancers. We started getting so much publicity. We were on the cover of Sports Illustrated and how I changed the face of cheerleading. Paula, of course, traded her pom-poms for pop stardom. And she's not the only celebrity who cheered for the home team. I loved being a cheerleader in high school. It was so much fun. I was a cheerleader. I mean, I, had, I was probably exhibitionistic to some extent. I kind of do the same thing now. You know, I'm just cheering on the contestants. Recognize some of these famous faces? Here's Sally Field before her flying nun days, and Susan Sarandon during her high school years. Sandra Bullock wore a letter sweater, as did that wild and crazy guy, Steve Martin, and this longtime leading lady, who'd rather not look back. Thank God I became a star and could forget about the cheerleading being a high point. <laughs> and then there are those who'd rather not forget. I love cheerleading. It is my... There is nothing I would rather watch on television, ever. The mere mention of cheerleading still excites Jamie Lee Curtis. I cheerled for Westlake School, which now is merged with Harvard School here in Los Angeles. Uh, we cheerled for the boys' school, Harvard. So, you know, and we were just all losers, and it was fabulous. Vicki Lawrence also has fond high school memories. I was the choreographer for the girls. I whipped everybody into shape. I made us go up to a summer camp at Redlands to learn how the college girls did it. And then I made all the girls learn how to do that, and I choreographed all of our routines. I loved it. Even Madonna was a team player as a cheerleader. Well, sort of. That was um, a phase in my life, you know, but I, I, I was actually um, kicked off the cheerleading team. Now, just ask Vicki Lawrence. There's a reason for pom-pom's popularity. I think you have to be a bimbo. You have to have a love for wanting to get out in front of all those people and wiggle your butt and show off and... Yeah, I think maybe it's, a, it's the bimbo factor. All kidding aside, that's the kind of stereotype cheerleading pros love to prove on. Because in real life, today's breed of cheerleaders, like the teams they support, trains hard. One, two, three, four, jump, flip, jump. And performs hard. 
But be careful, not all consider themselves cheerleaders. Like most squads in the NBA and NFL, they prefer to be called dancers. So it's not rah-rah, it's not chants, it's not pyramids, it's not stunts, but, but actually it's jazz dancing with pom-poms. They're cheering on the team. They don't do stunts, they don't do jumps, um, they don't use pom-poms, so we are more of a dance troupe. The majority of us are uh, trained dancers, and what we do is dancing, so I usually refer to it as a dance team. Um, you know, I didn't, nothing against cheerleaders at all. You don't offend the girls or the, you know, the Laker girls to call us the cheerleaders or the Laker cheerleaders, it's okay because to the public that's what we are. No matter what they're called, no matter who they root for, the women on the sidelines have to look their best. And helping the San Diego Chargers squad achieve that goal is professional stylist Alan Edwards. In the pro game, the audience wants to see pretty sexy women out there. The cheerleader is like a showgirl in Las Vegas, so they need to be seen from distance. And so the transformation begins. Turning the girl next door into a sexy sideline siren is no easy task. It takes a group effort. And we work on, you know, different styles, hair color, what type of makeup we use, on um, different colors. So we do work as a team to create each look for the girls. Well, it's sort of like doing a, a ramp fashion show. You have to move quick, you gotta get them done, you gotta get them curled, and you gotta get them out. But all this hard work would be for naught if it weren't for staying power. A lot of hairspray. about 14 to 16 routines a game and despite that our hair does stay very well I and mean, obviously the focus of our game day is not our hair and Alan Edwards helps take that take care of that aspect of the game for us. With my hair, good. I good. <laughs> this is the art of creating curly big hair for cheerleaders. We really don't want to have to worry about what our hair looks like or makeup, so it's nice to have someone else worrying for us about that stuff. All worries aside, these beauties are ready to take the field and do what they love. I just love being out there in front of the crowd and dancing. When you're out there, it's like I, there's no worries at all. Wow, those girls sure can dance, can't they? Stick around, because when we come back, we will get an intimate look at the daily life of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader and meet some of the budding beauties who dare to dream. We'll also go courtside to check out the lovely Laker girls. But first, this co-ed squad teams with school spirit. Mia Farrow's real life was more dramatic than any movie. She had a brilliant career. You couldn't get any bigger as your first big film. Intriguing romances. She was crazy about it. Well, he was Frank Sinatra. And a lover who had an affair with her daughter. The one thing I have been guilty of is falling in love with Mrs. Farrow's adult daughter. How did one man's love lead to a mother's betrayal? I was completely traumatized. Mia Farrow, next Sunday at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on the E! True Hollywood Story. If you ever end up in some Ben-Hur movie in your new 97 Pontiac Sunfire GT with its powerful twin cam engine, well, you'll be glad you have a quick handling sports suspension and, of course, 150 horses. The new 1997 Pontiac Sunfire GT. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. And, hey, check out Hard Rock Live, presented by Pontiac Sunfire, only on VH1. From the dream makers of Disney. That's low. Introducing Disney Cruise Line. Imagine combining a Walt Disney World vacation with a magic voyage to our own island in the Bahamas. Call and discover uncharted magic. Remember? Remember the time just after the war when those three Swedish nurses invited us for a weekend in Paris. How can I forget? We should have gone. Coulda. Woulda. Shoulda. 
Yep. Jostin. Better do the good stuff now. Once every millennium, something happens so profound it changes everything. Till now, this was a large, medium, and small pizza. Now Little Caesars says this is a large, medium, and small. Does this mean everything will get bigger? Or does it simply mean Uncle Ed can come to dinner? Little Caesars new big, big pizzas. They dwarf the competition. Small $5.99, medium $7.99, large $9.99. Bigger, bigger. Do not reveal the secret of the Scarlet Pimpernel, the new musical adventure coming to Broadway October 7th. For tickets, call 212-307-4100. One hour tribute to cheerleaders. I'm Amy Yazbek. Like most things in Texas, cheerleading is big, big enough to rival football as the Lone Star State's primary passion. And the co ed squad you're about to meet sure takes its cheers to heart. It's like anything else in Texas, it, it becomes almost obsessive. Big business. Cheerleading today combines many talents. While professional cheerleaders feature intricate dance routines, at the high school level, gymnastics and acrobatics are the key. Whatever the elements, cheerleading is no longer simply a sideline attraction. It's just a fun thing to do. It used to not be really a sport. You used to just, you know, get the crowd yelling and stuff, and now... A lot of people go to the games to watch cheerleaders instead of football. Sounds like blasphemy. But even in the South, where football is a religion, cheerleading is equally revered, especially at Louisville High School near Dallas. Louisville, it's really fun being a part of it because there's a lot of pride and tradition and involved with the spirit. I think it's a great way to get involved in the school and uh, really re um, represent your school. Everyone knows who you are and um, what school you're from. Pride is one of the biggest, biggest parts of cheering at Louisville. The spirit that goes along with it, the people that look up to you, because everybody here on the squad is, is a role model to someone in the school. And those role models include 10 girls and 10 boys. That's right, boys. My sister was a cheerleader for two years. Um, I saw how much fun she was having in camp and competitions and how much she was fun having, how much fun she was having cheering at the games. And um, I just decided to go for it. They're really um, looked up to at our school, but other schools like our Crosstown rivals, they think it's like sissy or something. But I dare anybody to compare their strengths to one of our Belcher guys and they'll see that they're not as sneaky or whatever they might think. Head football coach Ronnie Gage actually trained some of the male cheerleaders on the football field. We've had a lot of kids leave our program that, that have come up here and done real well. I used to play football and then I quit and just went to cheerleading. I just wanted to do it because everyone else had done it. Being a cheerleader in Texas does come with a few fringe benefits. Cheerleading is definitely popular in Texas. Um, it's a good way. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people want to be cheerleaders just because there are so few of them, I think. And um, you get seen by everybody. You can walk up to people in the hall and ask who the student body president is, and they can't tell you, but you can ask them to name 20 cheerleaders, and they can name every one of them. Along with this popularity and attention comes a lot of hard work. And because cheerleaders must audition every year, there's always the pressure of being good enough to stay on the squad. There's also a responsibility to keep the magic fresh and the standard as high as possible. Of course, it all comes down to teamwork. Their leadership skills are increased because they have to learn to work with each other. And that's a major, major point because they can't, you know, if they can't work with each other, then, you know, whenever they get out into the real world, they're not going to be able to work with other people, uh, you know, on jobs and things like that. Okay. Just hold it. You can hold it sideways. Even. The discipline of working together is exactly what's allowed the Louisville High School squad to win two state cheerleading championships in a row. Everybody is pressured when they're out on the, on, the, on the mat ready to do their competition. Everybody is pressured to do their best. Let's have everybody do it. Everybody. Not just half of us. They've also been helped by Kevin Andrews, a paid professional cheerleading coach who works for the Universal Cheerleading Association. 
having a specialized coach is unusual among high school. That's the whole idea of, of the competitions is to, um, is to stay crowd involved and do everything for the crowd. It's not, it's not uh, really just a big show. Practice and dedication are essential to this team, whether they're competing for a title or instilling school pride. But for these cheerleaders, learning to jump, shout, and move is only part of the job. Louisville is a unique place. There's a lot of tradition in this old high school, and, and uh, Louisville is a blue-collar town. We have a lot of just good old faithful football fans that come out on Friday night. A long-time tradition at Louisville is the pep rallies, the spirit days. Our cheerleaders are just phenomenal, the amount of work they put in and the job they do decorating. When it's game time, you can hear screams for the fighting farmer. And you can see flurries of colorful pom-poms as the cheerleaders work tirelessly to keep the spirit going in the stands. On this night, the fighting farmers have scored a victory and everyone goes home a winner. In Texas, where cheerleading and cowboys go hand in hand, it's never too early to start rooting. So each year, the world-famous Dallas Cowboys squad stages a spirited showdown that's become a tradition for budding baby boosters. Families descend upon Dallas Stadium to watch children from kindergarten through high school compete against each other and enjoy the chance to meet the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. They get to see us in person, and I know that's really important to them and it's important to us too we love interacting with the kids they are our biggest fans and they're our best fans it makes me very proud that little girls look up to us and they want to dress like us and they consider us a role model so it's, yes. you know it's exciting for them and it's, it's real not you know it's nice to see that I've never been to cheerleaders before, and I like to do dancing and stuff. It's really fun doing cheerleading and dance. The hasty scribbles and numbered evaluations of the judges determine how the girls will rank. We're looking for that special spark that the kids have, the ones that come out there with the most energy, that are well put together, their team is choreographed well by their dance teacher. Parents are just as passionate when it comes to the institution of cheerleading. My daughter's cheering for the All-Star Comet team. We just want to show our spirit. We said we came from a small town, but we have big mouths. <laughs> I think some parents can be very competitive, but for the most part, they're, it kind of brings the community spirit together. Parents that probably don't work together uh, become united at things like this, and they are cheering for their little girls. I think when girls are small, they like to be cheerleaders, and they like to be Miss Americas, and they, they some of them want to be doctors and lawyers and firemen, but um, I do hope that we can make some of these little girls' dreams come true someday. Who knows? With plenty of practice, those petite pom-pom girls may one day cheer for the Cowboys. When we return, we will go behind the scenes with the Los Angeles Laker girls. But first, the USC Yellen song leaders give it the old college try. He grew up making others laugh, but for Jim Carrey, life wasn't always funny. He had a more difficult time than most students. He lived on the streets. He actually became homeless. And met with early failure. He got booed the first time, but when he finally found success and gambled with it. I got standing O's every night and stuff, and I just quit. The gamble paid off. It is a miracle, but it's a hard work for a miracle. Jim Carrey on Celebrity Profile, tomorrow at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on E. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. All my joys got nuts. Because sometimes you feel like sometimes you. My name is Frank Maddox. I'm a baseball scout for the Seattle Mariners. 244 pounds. He's probably a little hefty. <laughs> we need somebody else for center field. But there's no way I'm going to Phoenix, man. It's too hot. You gotta try to look in the future, and that's a tough thing to do. Simmons is dropping the ball. On the competition, that is. Only Simmons has Beauty Rest pocketed coil springs. 
to reduce movement and help give you undisturbed sleep. Simmons Beauty Rest, the Do Not Disturb mattress. One star lost a family. One family lost a star. It's back-to-back -back E! True Hollywood Stories next Sunday, beginning at 6 Eastern and Pacific, only on E! Congratulations, John. You hit the football pool again. What's your secret? John, that new land deal has earned you an executive vice presidency. Congratulations. What's your secret? Oh, John, this shrimp with pineapple mango sauce is positively divine. What's your secret? The Philadelphia Inquirer. Delivered free. Your secret to more of the good life. With secret ways to decorate rich without money. Surge ahead in business. The hottest new places to eat. Undiscovered romantic escapes. And more. Call now and get four free weeks, including Sundays. Plus this official Eagle starter cap. Free when you subscribe. Mark it down, but you're making money. What's your secret? John, you eat and eat, but you stay so thin. What's your secret? Call now and get four free weeks of the Inquirer. Plus 12 more 16 weeks in all for four easy payments of just 12.90 plus this official eagles cap a 15 dollars value free call 1-800-325-7830 I'm Amy Yazbek, and welcome back to E's 60 Minute Salute to Cheerleaders. The University of Southern California, on whose basketball court I am now standing, is a school steeped in history, spirit, and pride. Whether it's on this court or on the field, USC song and yell leaders are carrying on the Trojan tradition. Go Trojans! Well, this one is obviously broken. Excuse me. Basket tosses, cradle catches, and suspended splits. Cheerleading is clearly not the same old song and dance it used to be. But even if the old-fashioned cheers have been replaced by more modern and complex moves, tradition is still alive and well at the University of Southern California, even if the customs are, well, a little unconventional. These women are called song girls, and what they do here is distinctly unlike the cheers they learned in high school. Here at a college level, it's rather different because everything we do is dependent on the band. They are just as much a part of getting the crowd going as we are. Also, a lot of cheerleading at the high school level is more gymnastics oriented. Ours is more towards dance and technical stuff like that. The song girls entertain the crowds with intricate dance routines at various sporting events. They're the ones in the TV close-ups at halftime. I'm a performer anyway, so I just love being in front of crowds and making it enjoyable. Every experience is more enjoyable if you have someone there that enjoys it as much as you. I think they love the university more than anything. I think most of the women particularly, they've been dancing most of their life, and this is an opportunity to, to be dancers and to perform as well as represent the university. On most college campuses, the cheerleaders are talented and energetic females. At USC, the guys also get into the act. We have yell leaders, which is traditionally an all-male squad that does stunting and leads the yells at the football game. And they began in about 1922, whereas the girls were started in 1968. So there's quite a tradition in history with the yell leaders. Being a yell leader, I think, is fantastic because you get to be part of the whole Trojan family and Trojan pride. And I think a tremendous aspect of it for me and something that I bring home every night is that this is something I'll be able to show my family 20, 30, 40 years down the road and get to say that I was really part of the pride. Personally, I get the satisfaction of being able to help the crowd out and the team. I was an athlete in high school, and I knew how crowd support was a big factor in how the teams played. Before they take to the field, these full-time students have their work cut out for them. They practice stunts, which show they're as strong and as talented as the athletes they're cheering for. The players, in turn, show their appreciation on the field. You just get energized by the, uh, by the excitement. So that's, that's one of the best things um, about playing football. I mean, your ears are ringing, and it's the moment you can't forget. USC fans have come to expect the best from both the yell leaders and the award-winning song girls, and being the best takes lots of hard work. We practice probably 15 hours a week, 12 to 15 hours a week, plus the number of gigs that we do, which may include basketball games, volleyball games, football games, um, alumni events, pep rallies, etc. 
plus the academics. It's difficult. It's time management. Most of us have big black books. <laughs> um, and our, our days are pretty much scheduled exactly on the hour by the hour. You just have to know exactly what you need to do and when and get through it that way. Leading the squad through its grueling paces is choreographer Maggie Miguel, a former song girl and a fellow student. Her precision routines help distinguish this outfit from other dance corps. I think that the USC song girls have a very um, uplifting, peppy kind of style. I, I personally try and make sure that um, the moves match the music. I think that people like to see us because we have a different look than a lot of other schools and because we just dance and things like that. And I hope that when people walk away that they're excited about what they saw and that they have a sense of pride that we represent USC. The girls are practicing diligently to perfect their moves for one of the season's biggest games, USC versus Notre Dame. We find out at the beginning of the week two songs that we're doing at the end of the week. So we have about four days to prepare and perform new dances every week. So this is our halftime for the new Notre Dame game. And um, so we were quickly trying to create that and maybe get to work. The excitement of the crowd is tangible as the USC Trojans and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish come together. But for the song and yell leaders, it's not game time, it's showtime. I think that's what's most exciting because then they get to perform. They really are there to cheer on the team and perform and get the crowd involved with what they're doing and with the game. Pumped up. I'm ready to put on a pair of pads myself and get out there. Yeah! 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 I'm gonna run around the whole field, run up the stands, yell at everyone, get all fired up. 14 years we haven't beat these guys. We're gonna kick the crap out of them right now. We're gonna get it done right now. Yeah. Prophecy prevailed as tonight the Trojans triumph in their first victory against the Fighting Irish in 14 years. You think it was the cheering that made the difference? When Eve's tribute to cheerleaders continues, we will take a private peek at America's sweethearts and find a pair of kooky cheerleaders who get a kick out of comedy. But first, meet one of the most celebrated cheerleading squads in the NBA. You got it. I can't really believe I'm here. The guts. I hope I don't look too scary. The glamour. Make it look nice. The good. Beautiful features, nice nose, lips, eyes, shape of face. It takes a lot to be the face of the future. 80% of our business is how you photograph. Find out how it happens. Personality and attitude are really on the top of the list. It's E's Making of a Supermodel 97 tonight at 8 Eastern and Pacific only on E. This is Golden Hot Cup of Tea, Grandma. Thank you, Thomas. Introducing the M Class. It performs like a Mercedes, no matter where it goes. Once every millennium, something happens so profound that changes everything. Till now, this was a large, medium, and small pizza. Now, Little Caesars says this is a large, medium, and small. Does this mean everything will get bigger? Or does it simply mean Uncle Ed can come to dinner? Boy, that's a lot of pizza, Uncle Ed! Little Caesars' new big, big pizzas. They dwarf the competition. Small $5.99, medium $7.99, large $9.99. Bigger, bigger. For afternoon entertaining, forego the fine china. Make it relaxed and serve something wonderfully crunchy with intense flavors to savor one at a time. Low-fat, 100% popcorn cakes from Orville Redenbacher. It's a whole new class of snacks. If you love chocolate, peanuts, caramel, and especially Reese's peanut butter, good news. Reese's Nutrageous bars are now 20% bigger. NASA wanted Fred Randall for his mind. This kid is a genius. Unfortunately, the rest of him came with it. 
Oh, he's doing great. Hello, my little hairball. But he's going to show them what he's made of. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Disney's Rocket Man, rated PG. Starts Friday, October 10th. Hello, I'm Tony Dancer, and um, this is my hundred of me. And we are watching. E. Mm. Welcome back to E's one hour look at cheerleaders. I'm Amy Yazbek, and this next gorgeous group has certainly earned its share of applause. With their eye-catching moves and daring dance routines, the Laker girls continue to create trend-setting traditions. The Laker girls are certainly giving a new meaning to the word showtime. While it used to be synonymous with flashy slam dunks watched by Hollywood stars, with their funky moves and choreographed routines, these dancers have given audiences a reason to stay in their seats during breaks in the game. It's the perfect opportunity to get out in front of thousands of people and perform. It's one of my dreams, so I feel like I'm, you know, sometimes I have to sit down and stop and... Wait a minute, <laughs> you're living in a dream. That dream came true for the squad in 1983 when their popularity soared thanks to the high-energy hip-hop choreography of then-Laker girl Paula Abdul. And we had a, a, a great situation when Paula Abdul was here and a lot of other great Laker dancers, and uh, that kind of put her on the map, you know, when she made her success. It was kind of like the MTV craze at that time when she was... Um, involved with the organization. And I made it as the Laker girl. I was asked to be the choreographer because I was literally making up the routine. Before Paula appeared on the scene, the Laker girls were mainly former USC and UCLA song leaders. Today, the emphasis is on dance. We do consider ourselves dancers, not so much cheerleaders. Yeah, we have cheering on the side and we cheer the team on, but yeah, we don't do a lot of, we don't do pom-poms or straight arms. Um, we are a dance team. Some may say they are poetry in motion. But they didn't get that reputation without good old-fashioned hard work and lots of practice, practice, and more practice. And all the arms have to be the same way, all the hands, fingers. I mean, I, it's really nitpicky um, to a stranger on the street, but when you watch them out on the court, I like to see them as 12 girls dancing as one. It's a really fast-paced rehearsal because we run a routine, critique it, and the next time we do it is on the court for everybody. It takes more than fancy footwork to be on the squad. It takes drive. And the drive to be the best comes from a very special place. It, it comes from inside. Definitely, it's, I mean, it's a passion. It's something that you just, you're willing to do. I don't feel like I go to work. I, I feel like I'm just going and I get to perform. And it's my job. I do it because I love to do it. Um, I have another job that I work that's part-time. And um, when I come here, it's like all of my work responsibilities go away. I come here and I work from the heart. And the payoff for all this heart work is game night, when the blood, sweat, and tears turn into pure energy. That's our treat for doing all this work. I mean, for me, that's why I'm a dancer. Like, that rush you get before you dance. Sometimes I feel that I'm real antsy, you know, sometimes it's like I don't even want to get ready, just wish you could snap your fingers, be ready, and go dance. That's the fun part. With only moments to go before tip-off, both the Laker girls and players perform their own last-minute rituals. Right before we go out, we do the makeup, we do the hair, we stretch, we eat, we make phone calls. We just stretch out and go over the routines in our head to make sure that we remember everything and that we're prepared to go out there and dance when the buzzer rings. The girls who redefine sideline entertainment hope to use this forum as a launching pad to stardom. I would love to get, you know, stay in the entertainment industry as a performer, 
so hopefully this can lead to something else. But even if it doesn't, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I think a majority of us go out to auditions every day and are out there pounding the pavement as professional dancers. While they are waiting for Hollywood to come knocking at their door, these girls stay busy knocking out forum fans and players. Oh, Laker girls are the best! The best, please! All oh, the Laker girls? Mm -hmm. I mean, while I'm playing, I'm really not supposed to be looking at them, but, you know, when I'm on the bench and, like, you know, we're up by a couple points, I can take a look at them. They're gorgeous. They bring a lot of excitement to the game, you know. Some nights where we're not playing well, you know, they can get the, the crowd into it, which gets us motivated. So we really appreciate their help out there. I think they're one of the only organizations that's truly a dance team versus just raw, raw, cheer it. So um, I think they have a lot of talent. Well, I think they you know, have one of the best uh, squads around here, just like the basketball team. <laughs> but the best part for some of the Laker girls is inspiring young dancers. I hope that there's a little girl or little girls out there that see us dancing out there and see that, you know, they can do this one day. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's within their reach. As you can see, the Laker girls have all the right moves to lead their team to victory. Coming up, we will go backstage with Saturday Night Live's own brand of comic cheer. We've also got an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at a day in the life of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. But first, this elite group of girls gathers not to boost their team, but to brave the competition. The perfect career. She was a, an inspiration to me. The famous couple. It was more than a relationship, it was a lifestyle. The ultimate betrayal. The one thing I have been guilty of is in love with Mrs. Farrow's adult daughter. Next Sunday at 8, it's the premiere of Mia Farrow, the E! True Hollywood Story. Nice. But first, at 6, take a closer look at Michael Landon, the E! True Hollywood Story. One star lost a family, one family lost a star. It's back-to-back -back E! True Hollywood Stories next Sunday beginning at 6 Eastern and Pacific only on E! Americans bought over 4 million back massagers, thousands of vibrating chairs, and so many things that look like this and this that we wonder if some people aren't sleeping on the wrong mattress. We'd recommend a Sealy Posturepedic Sleep System, slept on by more people than any other mattress, including more orthopedic surgeons. Posturepedic support, only for Sealy. <laughs> For your first baby, you get all these fancy little designer clothes. You even get fancy, expensive diapers. Until you realize they're dressing better than you are. <laughs> then you get loves. They cost less. Because with loves, you pay for what's most important. Great protection is complete. Why pay extra for fancy fasteners and fuzzy covers? I mean, they're diapers. At least with expensive baby clothes, you can pass them down. First to your second, maybe your third. <laughs> hey, live and learn, and then get loves best friend. What do you think she's up to right now? Contemplating life? Dieting? Contemplating a new hair color? Thinking it's your turn to call? Well, now's the perfect time to find out. MCI introduces Five Cents Sundays. Five cents a minute, every minute of every Sunday, along with low rates all week long. If you're an MCI customer, if not, call 1-800-SUNDAYS. Hey, this is Elwood Blues at the House of Blues. You are watching E! Entertainment Television. Hi, I'm Amy Yazbek here at the University of Southern California, welcoming you back to E's 60-Minute Salute to Cheerleaders. Now, cheerleading is more than just short skirts and sideline flirts. It's hard work, as I'm learning. And if you don't believe me, just watch these kicky co-eds strut their stuff. There's nothing I love more in the world, 
except for my children, than watching ESPN's cheerleading championships. It's a halftime show that lasts an entire weekend. The annual College Cheerleading National Championship. This is the largest college cheerleading and dance team national championship of its kind. And it's no basic rah-rah weekend either. It's a dizzying display of vertigo-inducing choreography. Part aerobatics, part architecture. People love our shows. The music is exciting. The moves are wonderful when the when the uh, cheerleaders are thrown up in the air. It, it's explosive and it looks difficult. It is difficult. The championship has been televised annually on ESPN since 1984. I've been doing this event now for about 15 years and it really is a labor of love. It's a, a major competition involving schools from all over the country and for us to boil it down into a one hour television special is really a great challenge for us. We cover the event as completely as possible to put in the, into our efforts the same amount of effort the kids put into their routines. And the effort pays off for ESPN as the special consistently proves to be one of its most popular shows. The whole world loves a cheerleader. The, the, the enthusiasm is catchy and they're attractive, and very talented athletes, and uh, it's awfully hard not to love them. With 117 different colleges and universities entered in various divisions, the field of competition is always fierce. Last year's champions, University of Kentucky, they're back again. They're always very talented, very athletic. Um, NC State University, University of Tennessee. We've got some really, really good college squads that come back year after year. And over the years, even the veteran squads perform as if it's their first time. Before they go on, they're a little anxious, a little nervous, but if they hit their routine, they're on a big high. They go nuts, they jump on each other, they're very excited, very proud of themselves. <laughs> on the other hand, you know, if they make a mistake or fall, we do have some kids who get pretty upset. You know, they do the best they can, and but they have a good time here while they're here. We didn't do as good as we'd hoped to do, but you know, you never know what's going to happen when you get out there, and I'm proud of it. These kids, you can look at them, and you know, it. sometimes it makes you want to cry. They are, they are so intense the guys as much as the girls and they are so focused on what they're doing and we all get so emotional watching them if you see a mom or a dad that is watching their child perform you talk about emotional it's just so much for them and when it's over there's such a relief one of the remarkable aspects of the competition is the consistently high placement of squads from below the mason dixon line a lot of Southern teams will uh, perennially be in the top five. There are some pockets of incredible cheerleading all over the country. I think in the South, it is more prevalent because they start so young. So that might be why the Southern teams seem to be so much stronger. And it was that perennial powerhouse, the University of Kentucky, that took top honors this year. You think you did great? We're thrilled to death. We, we had a great routine. We have six championships. This will be number seven. Our entire group, we have 20 on this squad. It is a very happy group. They're mm -hmm. thrilled to death. Looks like they had a lot of fun, and there's still more fun to come with a comedic cheerleading duo and those sideline sensations. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders! He grew up making others laugh, but for Jim Carrey, life wasn't always funny. He had a more difficult time than most students. He lived on the streets. He actually became homeless. And then with early failure. He got booed the first time. But when he finally found success and gambled with it, I got standing O's every night and stuff, and I just quit. The gamble paid off. It is a miracle, but it's a hard work for a miracle. Jim Carrey on Celebrity Profile, tomorrow at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on E. Other things have come along for diarrhea since kaopectate, but I still haven't found anything that comforts me the way it does. 
A couple spoonfuls of creamy, soothing kaopectate is all it takes. Kaopectate. There's still nothing else quite like it. Because you want to keep their skin soft and smooth. Because their skin needs air to be healthy. Because the night's so long. Because your baby deserves the very best. It's Pampers Premium. Moms who thrive both prefer Pampers Premium. In fact, 63% more. Because dry and healthy skin is so important. Pamper the skin they're in. For the people of Goodlands, North Dakota, retribution has begun. One woman knows the reason. One man has the power to save them. A Dry Spell, the electrifying new novel by Susie Maloney. A Dry Spell, pray for rain. Go behind the scenes of Miss Hawaiian Tropic International. E, I love you. Coming up next, only on E. Tuesday, the best night in family comedy kicks off with a special home improvement. Then, last year, he restored your faith in comedy. Dan Aykroyd's back in the season premiere of Soul Man. Then, in a very powerful episode, a defiant son, an angry father. You're acting like some tyrannical fascist. Did he just call me a dinosaur? It's a new home improvement. Then, critics call it a hit, and you will too. Yay! It's the new comedy, Hiller and Diller. I've got to put a lock on that liquor cabinet. ABC Family Tuesday. of cheerleaders. You've met a few of them already, but now you'll get to know the world-famous Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, the squad that has captured the hearts of football fans everywhere, and in the process become an all-American icon. Hey, welcome to Texas Stadium! The image portrayed of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders is one of intelligence, self-confident, the all-American woman, poised, attractive, America's sweetheart. They haven't always been America's sweethearts. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, as we know them today, bounced onto the scene in 1972. The Cowboy organization wanted sideline entertainment, so a woman named Texie Waterman formed a squad of professional dancers. The rest, as they say, is history. There's just a mystique about the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. You don't really know them, and it might just be your next-door neighbor, but when she puts on that uniform, suddenly she's a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, and she's a celebrity. There's not a typical Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. The truth of the matter is that every lady that wears the uniform has her own unique charm and her own unique beauty. I used to work right up there in, in the stand selling popcorn and peanuts, and I would stop and just watch the cheerleaders and just wish that one day it was something that I could do. To be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, our only requirements are to be 18 years old and to have high school education. Of course, when they're auditioning, we look for that special spark. Of course, it takes more than just a spark to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. It also takes spirit, dedication, and hard work. Six, square your shoulders. One, two, up your head. Five, six, seven, slide. One, it's grueling for a couple of reasons. One is that they all are full-time students or they have a full-time career, and we require that. So they're a well-rounded person. We practice four to five nights a week and about four to five hours a night, so it is a big commitment. But when it's game time, we're ready for the crowd. We have women from all types of backgrounds. We have women of all types of professions. We have wives. We have mothers. So I think here on the squad, there's a woman here that everyone can relate to. Typical of these women is Nikki Hale, a single mother with a full-time job managing an apartment complex. I mean, there's nothing I can do if he's already signed his lease. After taking a year off to have a baby, Nikki has returned for her third season as a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. I decided to go back to, uh, to cheer once I had Hunter um, with only Hunter in mind. Um, but as long as our relationship did not suffer, I would continue to cheerlead because it's something I love to do. 
A lot of times during lunch breaks, I'll go visit Hunter and see how he's doing because I do spend very little time with him. Uh -oh. Like Nikki, Cheryl also performs a balancing act. The name maybe slightly. Her willingness to juggle her many cheerleading obligations with her career as a stylist is all to fulfill a childhood dream. This is something I've always wanted to do since I've been very young, and it's taken me several years to be able to finally make the team. It's the most incredible experience a girl could ever have happened to her in her entire life. Obviously, being a cheerleader is a full-time commitment, but these women aren't in it for the money. They make $15 a game, so you can't make a living on that. I don't even think it pays for their gas. That's just been tradition, to keep with the $15. And you get a better quality of girls who aren't doing it for the money, but for the love of dance, or just because the Cowboys are their favorite team, and they've been growing up wanting to do this. Part of the appeal of being a Dallas cheerleader is getting the opportunity to showcase other talents. <laughs> the show group is the group that you hear about that tours worldwide on USO DOD tours for the military. We're gone over Christmas every year. Um, we've done more tours than Bob Hope, which is real neat. In addition to their performing duties, these young women also devote countless hours of community service at hospitals and nursing homes. It's very special for me to go in and see that when we do appearances, say, at a hospital, it makes you feel so good about yourself and to know that children just look up to you and it just is the most incredible feeling in the whole world. It's that incredible feeling that these women take with them onto the field on game day. Absolutely, we definitely get butterflies. We're very excited about our pregame, excited about the game, the season. Whenever they make the announcement right before we come out and they introduce the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders and you're standing there, the, the waiting, that's when you're really nervous. They, to me, represent a tremendous uh, uh, tradition and success and recognition that really is reserved for sports teams. So to the Dallas cheerleaders mean to me uh, goes beyond a football team. They are the goodwill ambassadors of this organization. Belonging to the Cowboys organization means following the rules, and that includes no playing with the boys off the field. We keep our association together at a business level. Uh, there's no fraternization whatsoever involved with the players. It's tradition, it will be, and, and always has been. When their work is done, they do get to mingle with their fans. After the game is over, we do have an opportunity to walk to the wall after everything is final and sign autographs or hats or whatever the fans have. Also, after the game, when we leave to go to our cars and whatnot at the top of the tunnel, we have fans that wait for us to sign the calendars and things like that. So we do get to have some one-on-one -on -one contact with the fans. Thank you. Another hard day to work at the office. Wow. For America, sweethearts cheering must be a labor of love. Can you believe what they are? Eh? When our salute to cheerleaders continues, we will kick off with some funny girls and their funky moves. And I may even try my hand at this cheerleading game. Hooah! Mia Farrow's real life was more dramatic than any movie. She had a brilliant career. You couldn't get any bigger as your first big film. Intriguing romances. She was crazy about it. Well, he was Frank Sinatra. And a lover who had an affair with her daughter. The one thing I have been guilty of is falling in love with Mrs. Farrow's adult daughter. How did one man's love lead to a mother's betrayal? I was completely traumatized. Mia Farrow, next Sunday at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on the E! True Hollywood Story. A lifetime with eyes. Here, Casey. Here, boy. Oh, here, Casey. Come on, Casey. I'll race you. Every day you feed your dog eyes, you help its chance for a long, healthy life. Eyes is easy to digest, so more nutrition stays in your dog. Come on, Casey. of Disney. That's who? 
Introducing Disney Cruise Line. Imagine combining a Walt Disney World vacation with a magic voyage to our own island in the Bahamas. Call and discover uncharted magic. Everybody likes trucks. Not many companies in the world build customized products on the assembly line. Okay, okay. Oh, it's a Dash 13, yeah. I would tell our competitors today, stay in your manual world. Don't think about utilizing technology, and we'll see you and where you are in about five years. Once every millennium, something happens so profound it changes everything. Till now, this was a large, medium, and small pizza. Now Little Caesars says this is a large, medium, and small. Does this mean everything will get bigger? Or does it simply mean Uncle Ed can come to dinner? Little Caesars new big, big pizzas. They dwarf the competition. Small $5.99, medium $7.99, large $9.99. Bigger, bigger. This portion of E is brought to you by Little Caesars Pizza, where you get great taste at a great price. Pizza, pizza. celebration of cheerleaders. Hi, I'm Amy Yazbek, and they made me dress up for this last part. Now, during the past hour, you have seen the thrill of victory and the agony of sore feet, but sometimes cheerleading is just about girls who want to have fun. Next up, the world's wackiest cheerleaders touch down on Saturday Night Live. Kielbasa, big break! Kielbasa, big break! Introduce yourself! Uh, there's movements. I'm Ariana. I am petite. Our blue cheese smells. It's choreographed. My name is Craig. Papa. Got a hairy back. Papa. My favorite cheese Papa. is Monterey Jack. It's a lot to remember. Big, Big winner! winner! Woo! Woo! One of the funniest skits to hit the Saturday Night Live stage in years is Will Ferrell and Sherry O'Terry's caricature of two overzealous high school students who desperately want to be on the cheerleading squad. Right. Knock, knock. Who's there? The perfect cheer! Oh. Our first idea was... The first thing was that uh, he got he just joined the squad just so he could cop a field by flipping me around. And I said, I love you, Will, but I don't know how comfortable I'm going to feel being. So I lost out. Actually, they both won big time, as the skit has become an audience favorite. Introduce yourself. I'm Ariana. The boys are urgent. But I am proud to stay a virgin. Things have been slow. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Craig. I give good hugs. I'm not your friend if you do drugs. We have to start doing drugs. The skit's popularity is due in large part to the punchline. You see, the two cheer on the sidelines at the top of their lungs, but they've never actually made the squad. Attention all cheering morons. This is a ping pong match, so can you shut up? I think they're kind of like lovable losers. And that's like what makes it so funny. Yeah. Because you know, they are committed 100%, and even though you feel sorry for me, you just want to tell them, you don't get it. You two just don't get it. Will and Sherry's comic timing and signature style was honed at the Groundlings, an L.A. training camp for budding comics, where the emphasis is on writing. The performer really only knows the, the true right. voice, and, uh, mm -hmm. and if you can't express that, it's, it's kind of tough sometimes. Though Will was never a cheerleader, Sherry draws inspiration for her character, Ariana, from real life. Oh, God, I look back and I'm so embarrassed. I would think if there was a video of me actually cheering, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> My M.O. was trying too hard <laughs> and still never made it. So the question is, has life imitated art or has art imitated life? I have to remember that, um, you know... It is just a character. It is just a character. <laughs> Woo! Oh, wow, those two really put the rah-rah and sis boom -ba, didn't they? Hey, thanks for letting me share this high-spirited hour with you. And thanks to USC for having us here. I'm Amy Yazbek, and I hope you got a big kick out of our celebration of cheerleaders. I know I did. In fact, I'm so inspired, I'm going to give it a try myself. Ready? Okay. Give me an E. E. What does it spell? E. Entertainment Television, your entertainment news and information authority. E. Entertainment does not stop. E entertainment does not stop.